Hello and welcome back to GoldenEye. You can see we are a little bit lower rest than we have been before and we are a little bit more Nintendo than before. How have I never realized the spinning Nintendo logo has been used in more games than just Mario Kart 64? I don't know, but it's also running at 60 FPS. <laughs> Up until Bond here appears. I was about to say, like, you can tell when it switches, oh man. Yeah, if you're not using the anti-aliasing hack, it actually changes when the gun barrel shows up, so it's a little bit smoother. I'm not sure why that causes the change, but it does. But yeah, look at that sharp Sean Bean there. This is like the absolute pinnacle of N64 output, I think. On, on actual hardware, like, you could yeah. probably get, like, a cleaner look with, uh, you know, an emulator, which, or, which, which we have been seeing, but, yeah, th this is as good as, it, as it's gonna get for real hardware. I decided that I might as well just record a couple of episodes here on the N64 and see how people find it. If everyone hates it and wants me dead, then, okay, I can go back to the Xbox version, that's fine. But we'll just do this for a couple of episodes and see how it goes. That's a little bit of a dramatic response. <laughs> it's the internet, you know. I could see it if you had scan lines on. Yeah, no scan lines on internet video, that's never gonna work. It's a shame because, uh... It's a shame because the Retro Tank, Tank 5X's scan lines look uh, incredible in person. They are pretty good, yeah. Especially if you have, like, uh, the HDR mode engaged. Oh, man. I haven't actually tried that. But I'll play around with it at some point. Right now, though, we have a meeting scheduled with the head of Janus, the evil sort of criminal organization that we are hunting in the plot of this game. So, let's go see how that works out. And we get right into it. Statue Park is one of those levels where... It's just gonna spawn guys, so we might as well just... Not waste our time too much with these guys, just go. Ah, speedrun strats. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you could stand there and fight these guys, but they just keep coming, so there's not really much point to doing so. So first off, we have to find Valentin, who is kind of our reluctant contact, who's gonna set us up with Janus, and he's actually in this nondescript container. There he is. What? Oh, hi. I'm not sure the D-Blur and the AA hack really does any favors to these character models. Also, his head looks tiny. I mean, that's just how Robbie Coltrane looked, I guess. <laughs> this is probably the most or the second most cursed version of a Robbie Coltrane character on a console from this generation. <laughs> there might be a third one actually. I'm not sure if he appears in the World is Not Enough game. I was gonna say, I, I can't. I don't think I really associate Robbie Coltrane with like a tiny head. I thought that dude just fell over and died. I didn't realize he was doing an action roll. No, 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 he's doing his fancy rolls. He knows what's up. So there's some armor to the left, and I never remember how to actually get to that. And I really do want to pick that up because, well, body armor on double O agent is very rare indeed. That was that's a grenade. <laughs> and he blew himself up. Good job. Yeah, the armor you just go around this. Oh there there we go. That guy just walking through the smoke like Bill Goldberg. 
It, it helps to shoot around the statue, not at the statue? Usually, yeah. Now on the N64, of course, we can't move while aiming. We can strafe a bit, but it's more like popping in and out of cover, which is something you really want to learn if you plan to stay alive in any of these missions. It takes me a couple of missions to really get the hang of it. Oh no, Sean Bean is not dead. And he's evil. Gasp. Who could have ever seen this coming? I will say this is quite a bit less dramatic than the scene in the film. But how was it in the, uh, the remake of Goldeneye? I don't remember, which probably <laughs> says a lot. Okay, bye. So he left us with his friends here who are putting shotguns at us, so let's see if Lenin here can protect us. Apparently not. These guys are cool because they wear sunglasses at night. <laughs> also, the auto aim just completely failed me there. I was assuming it would lock on at some point, but it just didn't. Well, you were saying that auto aim is not again. all that helpful in uh, eight, 007 or 00 agent mode. Yeah, no, no, it really isn't. And I'm still kind of relying on it way too much. I should probably just turn it off. But I kind of like just having a vague suggestion that guy was about to throw a grenade and I was hoping he would drop it and blow himself up, himself up but no. Also, I'm glad it didn't blow up in his hand. <laughs> Maybe you shot him before he, like, uh, removed the pin. Yeah, yeah, I did. Also, I'm <laughs> glad I actually didn't hit the grenade with the shotgun shells because that would have been bad at that distance. Yeah, would've. So anyway, now we just head back to the start of the level. Which can be hard because it's a bit of a maze with all these sculptures and stuff here. Now the statue park here, it's not a real place in St. Petersburg. There is one in Moscow, but obviously this is not that. We're sort of based on that. Uh, oh, you're okay, fine. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah, this is also a bit less dramatic than it is in the film. I was concerned with the way she was laying down because it looked like her neck was broken, but... Ah, she's fine, don't worry about it. Oh, Jesus. Now, one slightly less nice thing about the shotgun these guys are using is that the enemies can just kind of ignore the sort of shotgun spread so they can just snipe you with it. Oh, the guy's just leaving. Okay. So, you've got basically, like, a striker from Resident Evil 4, but they got riot guns. Yeah, something like that. Oh, hello. Uh, hello, fellows. Here's a man with a box for a head. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know where his, uh, head ends and his neck begins. I mean, I don't know if they modeled his neck, but... Yeah, I think Brett Jones said that some of these later models look kind of janky because they were actually running out of space on the cart. <laughs> yeah, that checks out. Let's just go through this BJ gate here. BJ for Brett Jones, obviously. So that almost went badly many times because I am bad at aiming. Now, contrary to what some might say, the actual controls are pretty much fine. 
once you actually select a decent layout. The default one is interesting, but the one I am using, I'm moving with the D-pad and aiming with this stick, so I'm holding the left and center prongs of the N64 controller. And that is as close to like a modern shooter control scheme that you can get. On one controller anyway. Clearly you gotta bust out like that, that double controller thing that they can have on like uh, stop skeletons from fighting. Yeah, I think that one's unique. I have to actually <laughs> use two different controllers or two separate controllers. But never mind, because we are we have been captured again. I don't think the plot at this point makes any sense if you haven't seen the film. Well, it's good to see Justice is alive and well. Let's not. Hell yeah, slapper time! Yeah, usually I would just attack these guys immediately, but I wanted to get the bit of dialogue there. <laughs> now we could have just picked up the gun and started blasting, but this is another level that does the guard spawning trick from the second bunker level. So if you start shooting immediately, that room is gonna fill with Many strong men indeed, and that's not gonna be all that great for old James Bond here. I mean, that, that one dude there was just firing uh, at all cylinders at your groin? I can't imagine that's good either. Yes, well... It's James Bond. His groin has seen many things. <laughs> but let's not get into that. I think a lot of these guards here look like Graham Norgate, or have his face. And some of them I think are also Grant Kirkhope, <laughs> but I'm not sure because I can't really tell. I'm surprised you didn't just die immediately, just walking into this room and uh, slapping. The Graham Norgate trio wasn't really on point with their pistols there, so... So we are okay. So this part of the level that we are just leaving is actually a, multi a multiplayer map as well. These doors are locked in multiplayer, so we can't go into the whole other part there, but these corridors and everything from the start of the, the level, that's all in the multiplayer map. Ah, uh, okay. I think somebody was trying to shoot at us from behind in the corridor and just blew himself up. So, good <laughs> job there. I'm just losing way too much health. And you said there are no health pickups on a uh, double O agent, right? I mean, there are no health pickups on any difficulty ever. Fair enough. But there are also no body armor pickups on double O agent very often, anyway. Not in this level. Um, sir. Sir. Ah, he's fine. I I like how he came out and actually rolled back into the 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 room. He just Again? likes action rolls. <laughs> just gotta get his uh his daily action roll practice in. Yeah, apparently Duncan Bot would have to be really careful when mocapping those. I didn't think I'd actually get that guy with the pistol snipe. 
I didn't even know there was a dude there. If, if you were playing the Xbox version, I probably could have seen it, but like... I saw a blob that looked vague like a, vaguely like a person, so that was good enough. That's another one. That one's easier to tell. It looks a bit janky when he sort of moves his, his wrist while aiming. Which is also something that is not in the Xbox version, or at least if you're using the modernized controls and aiming. Okay, I'm glad we are in agreement. The sounds of doors behind us, they are kind of just freaking me out here, so I'm looking around. I know they're closing instead of opening, but still. Alright, just take the flight recorder and shove that down my pants. Now we just need to find Natalia, and I tend to get lost in this level pretty easily, so... Alright, so after about 17 hours of wandering around trying to find this door... Oh, hold on. Oh, come on. I'm hitting Man, everything except this head. You shot him in the neck? I think that should be an instant kill? Or at least a slow and very painful death? Okay, so we have found Natalia, and that guy just did me a huge favor by deciding to throw a grenade instead of shooting, because he would have killed me. <laughs> but instead, he ensured that we are actually going to get out of this level alive, I think, once we can get Natalia to cooperate. Yeah, she sometimes gets spooked when we save her from those, those guards, and... She runs either here or to the room in the multiplayer section with the three Gravenor gates. Oh no! So that's why it's a good idea to clear those out first. Or just clear, clear that whole area first. Yeah, that checks out. Yep, nothing else here. Now I just need to find the right door to get to the exit which may take me several months actually it's right here in the sort of main area um Natalia Natalia? oh there you, you are where, where are you going? I don't know how close she has to be to you for this to count but I just wanna play it safe come on Well, that's great. We have saved Natalia and everything is fine now. It would be really bad if she just got kidnapped by Olmov at this point or something. Oh, well, never mind then, I guess. Uh-oh. I don't know when Olmov really had time to grab Natalia again. I guess while we were pausing at the end of the mission. This really is, like... Uh, a good reason to, uh, you know, watch the movie if you're gonna play the game. Yeah, yeah. In the film, uh, Natalia kind of falls through a grating on the, on the floor and just 
right next to Orumov, basically, so... Also, that's a bit desperate there, I think, Moneypenny. Anyway, here's the streets of St. Petersburg and one of the... Maybe the worst level in the game, I think. We'll see why in a moment. Oh, man! The first of the frame rate is having a moment as well, so let's just let it do its thing. Let's get rid of these lads. If we can ever hit them, there we go. Now, the aiming on the reticle, that is... That actually feels really good on the N64 stick. It does not feel good on the Switch, as I'm sure we both found out recently. Uh, yeah, I had, I had a bad time trying to trying to make that work. Yeah, that's because the Switch joysticks just don't have the range that the N64 joystick does. Because that has a ton of range. And when N64 games are ported or emulated on other systems, they tend to get the joystick range kind of wrong. So it's gonna feel too twitchy and just kind of unpleasant in general. But that's not really the case with the original controller. But get used to the aiming system and not being able to move a whole lot while aiming. You can just headshot these guys all day long, I think. Yeah, for as uh, maligned as the N64's uh, joystick array is, like, it was really, really uh, precise, I guess? Yeah. Like, the actual build of it is a bit questionable, but I have no complaints about the response. I'm really not sure when Orumov managed to do that. I guess Bond might have been distracted by a particularly adorable kitten or something, but... Okay, bye, Valentin. Let's check this guy out. Shot one. Two, three, four, five, six. And he barely flinches. <laughs> Love the action jump through the window. I am no expert on getting shot, but I'm pretty sure that getting shot six times at point blank range is usually gonna incapacitate most people. Usually. Anyway, yeah, we're supposed to take the tank, which was in the image for the, or the, yeah, the image in the level selection, but we are not taking the tank, we are going on foot because this is, well, first of all, this is really fast, and also we are a smaller target. And being a smaller target helps because there are guys with rocket launchers. Although, of course, I make a complete mess of it anyway, get stuck on this roadblock, which is, of course, the intended purpose of the roadblock, so good job there. On their behalf. There is at least that one body armor pickup here, but of course I completely waste it immediately because I kind of got stun locked there when these guys started shooting, so... So that didn't go well. That's unfortunate. But so far we are still trucking along. I could go even faster if I decided to stray front at all times. Which is also something that is easier on the N64 than on the Xbox. Maybe if you like stare at the ground too to like uh, reduce what, what's uh, being rendered on screen? Uh, you joke, but I do that at one point. Not in this video. I wasn't joking. <laughs> and also, yeah, I never said this was the successful run. I was wondering how this was going to be the successful run, because this is this I mean, we were felt basically like very, uh... at the end anyway. So here's another outtake of sorts. I am kind of doing this wrong because the 
proper way would be to take it, take it kind of slow. Also, while you are a small target, it doesn't always go that well. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, like, I heard the whistle of the rocket straight behind me, and I was like, oh great, here it comes. <laughs> so, on this run, I just have to take the tank. So let's see what happens when we run to the rocket, guys. And when you're in the tank, you take only 25% of the normal damage, but it turns out it doesn't really matter when you get hit by several rockets. The, the James Bond I'm familiar with can take at least one rocket to the face, but taking several at once, that's probably a non-starter. Yeah, I think we took one and lived, but... But yeah, that's just not a deal. I'm just gonna fire some celebratory shots. Or maybe warning shots to show them I'm coming and they better watch out. Also, there are civilians running around, and if we kill, I think, two of them, we fail the mission, so that's fun. So this is obviously based on the climactic or the big action set piece from the film, where Bond just drives a tank to downtown St. Petersburg and gets in a big chase with the police and all that stuff, but... The N64, at least, this engine couldn't really handle any of that. Yeah, it is struggling. Is it so at least, we get this uh, shit instead. Is it at least smoother on Xbox? Oh uh, yeah, it is. Okay. At least when the frame pacing isn't having a vacation and making the entire game feel like you're running in quicksand. But yeah, generally you're not supposed to take the tank on double O agent because you are a humongous target. Yeah, that makes sense. And if you're still taking damage while you're being shot at while uh, in the tank, like... Yeah, because Bond is an idiot and doesn't go in the tank, he just sits on top of the tank. And still somehow pilots it, which I'm not sure about the logistics there, but... Well, at least no one's throwing grenades into the, uh, the hot seat. Well, that guy is. <laughs> Maybe not the best idea, but... I mean, personally, if I saw some lunatic in a tank bearing down on me, I probably wouldn't stop to try and throw a grenade at the tank. I would probably consider an evasive maneuver at that point. <laughs> at least that's what they taught us in the army, you know? <laughs> Still, though, if you can pull it off and, like, uh... Take out a tank on foot with just grenades. I think that makes you the shit. Yeah, but... I think that guy was just shit in general. <laughs> also, that guy. What, what was that guy doing there? Tried to get run over and failed the mission for me. At this point, I was considering just getting out of the tank. And doing the rest on foot, but I was like, oh well, whatever. Also, that civilian just got shot by this, this soldier, which I'm sure is going to be blamed on me. But as long as we don't kill any other civilians, or any other civilians don't get killed by any other means, we should be fine. I don't think there are any more civilians here anyway. Hmm. Just gonna drive through my own explosion there. And we have reached the end. There is a short route and a long route through this, and obviously this was the short one. But it did take some doing. I can't imagine the long route is, uh, super viable on, um, double O agent. On double no, no it's not. And the game also changes where the rocket guys are, so that's fun as well. Oh boy. Yeah, so on one run you might just have a couple of guys with the AKs, and then on the next run... Oh, here's three guys with rocket launchers, have fun! Yeah, yeah, the roadblocks are kinda randomized, so that's a bit annoying. But we got through it, and that's what matters. 